Hello everyone and thank you for being here with us today. My name is Mirko Cambi and, and I am the manager of the technology career at um, Medibank. Since 2000 I have been working in the financial engineering group and my primary development tool is C++. Today we will see how Apache Ignite has helped us overcome some performance issue we discovered in our web application. Okay, let's start. This is the agenda for this talk. After a brief introduction, we will explore what Argo is, its initial architecture, and how it has evolved to overcome some performance issues. Then we will dive into spe some specific aspect of how the application works with Apache Ignite. Brief introduction for Mediobank, that is an Italian investment bank. Is, uh, has operating in the financial service sector since uh, its establishment in 1946. Uh, the bank has strong presence both uh, within Italy and internationally. The financial engineering group is an essential component for um, every investment bank performing crucial functions. Its main responsibilities include pricing and valuation of structured product using advanced mathematical models. Through quantitative models and risk management techniques, the group evaluates and oversees the risk associated with the complex financial products. For this reason, we develop our web application called Argo. This is the home page of our application. Very easy. And Argo, if I can define Argo, is mainly our risk reporting system and help our trading desk to understand their position on the market and the associated risk. This was our original architecture. Our client are trading desk. On our web server are running mainly three services. The first one is an Nginx to serve HTML pages. The second service is an instance of Node.js called MS proxy that receives the request from the clients and routes them to the service through the queue manager. In this case, we used RabbitMQ. On the application server, our services run, which respond to the client request and are connected to the other structure of the bank, such as databases and our computing grid. After some time, uh, we noticed that we had a problem, some issue, performance issue, uh, for some pay web pages. Um, the main problem was that uh, some tables on our mm, databases so optimized and uh, we looked for a very easy and uh, quick solution to implement. We decided to, to put Apache Ignite in our technological stack. In this slide, I want to show you the structure of uh, our cache that is very easy and linear. We store data for every day. The cache name is the web page name and every cache entry has a date as key and a serialized protocol buffer message as value. On the left, you can see the structure of, the, of this cache entry in C++. And below, you can see the protocol buffer message in, that is contained in uh, the cache entry value. Here is the same as before, but uh, the, the structure of protocol, uh, of protocol buffer entry is just uh, uh, right in JavaScript. Okay, now let's see how the introduction of uh, Apache Ignite has improved the performance of uh, our application. As you can see, there are two columns for every page. The, the name of the page is a row, gamma, vega, and correlation. For example, for the first page without cache, 
we we got about three minutes to uh, retrieve the data from database with the uh, apache ignite we we got about uh, three just a little just more than three seconds the same on the the other page and uh, you it's important to consider that uh, uh, the time is also includes the data transfer time and uh, with that with that i finished my part and uh, now i'm passing the floor to justin Thank you very much, uh, Mirko, for nicely putting the details about uh, who we are and what we do. Um, also, thank you uh, very much for the igniting for arranging this session and uh, giving a space uh, for Media Banka uh, to share our experience uh, with this amazing product. Um, before I moving to my part, um, I just uh, I would like to add a little more details about me, about my experience. Um, so I am having more than 15 years of uh, technology experience, uh, mostly in the investment front office, working with uh, traders, uh, quants, and other IT team. I primarily focus on uh, C Sharp, C++, and Python. Uh, most of the, my time is programming and testing the APIs, performance tuning, and um, uh, third-line support. Um, I work very closely with Mirko. Mirko located in our head office in Milan, and I located in uh, our London office. Um, even though Mediobanka has uh, different branches in uh, Europe, uh, but most of the trade happening in Milan and uh, London office. So for my part, um, I would like to um, first, I, uh, I'd like to cover the details about our uh, centralized data store, then uh, the use case then ignites a uh, role in our mission and some of the most exciting features of ignite uh, we used in our um, uh, architecture so in the current uh, uh, state of data access so we have a centralized uh, data store which is a relational database. Also, we have a time, time series database. So this is these two are our main data store. And this data store is uh, fully shared with all of the application in front office, middle office, back office. So we have various applications like Mura's, then reporting applications, pricing engines, risk applications. So all these applications are shared uh, this this um, main database uh, because of uh, all this kind of uh, applications is a bit old also it's a monolithic maybe it is developed uh, many many years ago so um, these all applications are I will say little uh, tightly coupled with the database um, because of that also the database is probably designed many many years ago also it is um, we vertically scaled up um, there is no horizontal uh, scaling options so now as Mirko explained earlier um, in the database is uh, grown and because a lot of trade data every year because of that there is a high latency and you know sometime DB goes down then the full operation in the bank is paused for a few minutes but it's quickly recovers. Uh, also, that some the data retrieval takes sometimes seconds and sometimes minutes. It again depends on how much load on the current database. Sometimes you know seconds, sometimes it is minutes. And the current database, because it's a relational database, and also it's um, you know pretty, um, it's not a, the new design. So it uh, lacking the option of horizontal scalability uh, also you know there is a there's a limit of uh, you know we can increase the vertical scalability <clears throat> also we have a uh, lots of uh, pricing engines running in a scheduled process so that will price our asset and show the data in our application so that sometimes the pricing engines taking longer time because the high latency of data retrieval from the database um, and also we have dependency 
with uh, other teams uh, for example if you want to uh, change a table or field or if you want to add an index on the table uh, because most of the tables and data shared between the applications uh, we have a dependency on other uh, teams and other users as well also you know there is a with the current data store there is a, a limited flexibility uh, means that whenever we request for a change we need to get approval from all other teams uh, because it's uh, shared um, the, so these are the main points uh, issues i will say issues about the current data store and in the next slide okay so we uh, put some key points in the use case uh, for the new system how it should be um, uh, for the new uh, architecture and the database so the key point was uh, the instant loading of the data because um, you know the most of the traders they use excel and uh, we have some pricing application um, when the, when they request uh, uh, data from Excel, if the data is taking too much time, then in Excel will be, be like hanging mode and it is taking a lot of time. Also the pricing engine, sometimes it's taking longer time than expected time. So this uh, first key point was the, the fast retrieval of data. Then at uh, the second point, uh, it's a completely new data architecture without any disruption to the current infrastructure um, so that we don't have to depend on any other team. So we can we can, we can can um, take the data what we re really require for the uh, pricing engines um, so that the performance will be much better. Also, we don't have to touch the, the main, the master data store in the current data store. And that helps avoid any a regression testing for the existing application in uh, you know in the front office or the middle office or back office and also we 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 need to uh, have the options for you know more availability more uh, scalability flexibility in all uh, in all steps like all the part of the applications so yeah in uh, in uh, if we have you know like more independent like uh, if we are not touching the current data store then um you know then we can manage the project in our departments like front office is always uh, uh, more pressures like you know we are always busy with the uh, trade is point so it's it's not maybe ideal with uh, work with other teams and um, make a plan for the um, timing, delivery, and uh, so many uh, perimeters of the project. So if we can take the data out the record for the front office and the pricing engine, so then, you know, we can work independently in the team. And um, when normally when we uh, go for a new system, we need to have more API support because uh, different technologies used in um, microservices and the uh, website, uh, web website, because the thin client also in the future, if the new architecture um, want to use in other part of the bank, like a middle office or back office, then they will have other requirements in case of the APIs. So we looked out um, um, for the API support uh, because in our uh, technological area, we primarily on C++. But in the web application, it developed in uh, Node.js. So, and also uh, in some other area, they may require more API support and um, SQL support. Uh, but you know, the um, some of the application they are just based on the key value base. It's more fast. But you know, some um, application also gives the option for. Uh, the cache uh, in memory database so that gives uh, sql support and uh, since we are in the coin team um, most of the cards they are developing uh, various uh, pricing models and um, we have the hpc data synapse grid but if we have the option to compute some 
um, models locally, then you know it is um, good to have a grid computing uh, because uh, we have the our desktop have more um, uh, co configured. Also, we have a more powerful desktop, uh, mostly the 24 cores. So, if we can have a, a local a grid computing um, f a feature, then our quants they can use that feature also as a like a local grid. But that was not like a primary, but it's a secondary requirement. So, um, the next part, I am just uh, I'm adding more details about. I know the Ignite's role in our mission. The first uh, achievement, you know, we uh, uh, did is, you know, the, the Ignite is loading data in sometimes milliseconds, but, you know, sometimes in seconds, but mostly in the milliseconds. And uh, Ignite has uh, three uh, the strategies, like caching strategy, uh, cache aside, and I think the read through, write through, but in the initial um, purpose, we use the cache aside strategy, which is a key value store. Um, also, as uh, Mirko explained earlier, we use um, protobuf um, binary message in our uh, in our technological area. So we uh, we we f uh, convert all the message to the protobuf, then serialize to binary, then save the cache database. So and same message we use in the pricing engine as well as our uh, web thin clients. So we did a performance test with the binary data in the um, key value. And sometime our data is, um, um, the size of the data is more like 100 KB or sometimes it's 4 MB, you know, because uh, as Mirka explained earlier, we store um, data in a uh, date key, for example, today, tomorrow, like, so each, a key store set of sets of data and the data size varies depends on various uh, assets for example the raw sensitivity then it hold more data and if it is uh, some model risk data then it has few uh, records of data for some time it can be vary from 1000 to 20000 records so and this um, binary message size is based on the number of records. So 100 KB load in, uh, I think, uh, 46 milliseconds. And if it is a 4 MB, then it is a 200 milliseconds. Um, you know, when the data pack is more, then it also take network transfer time. So, but it is still very, very fast. And the uh, next, part um, we uh, we tested um, um, the ignite uh, feature with SQL support and affinity key um, that is the you know next thing uh, we would like to use um, as a, as a read through or write through database or even even key value um, uh, caching ignite works well with the uh, relational data so we we uh, we um uh, we uh, loaded around uh, uh, five million uh, sorry one million records into the database. It's a relational um, data which uh, connected between primary key and um, uh, secondary key, and we loaded that data into Ignite Cache uh, with um, a configuration with affinity key and without affinity key. And we did a comparison. <clears throat> and um, if it is a just a um, seek, uh, just a one table data without any relation, it's loading very fast. It is loading in a 150 milliseconds. And if there is a relational data by specifying the affinity key, then it is a 450 milliseconds. Without affinity key, it's a 650 milliseconds. One uh, good advantage of uh, defining the affinity key uh, is uh, uh, Ignite uh, node. There is a processing node and uh, various other backup, various nodes which keeps a backup copy of current data. So if we um, specify an affinity key field name, all the relational related data will be kept in one node so that the processing will be very fast. Otherwise, 
I think the Ignite will pull the data from different node and add do a um, relation in the processing node. So we did that uh, performance testing and it works really well. So probably we will use that SQL uh, support with Affinity Key in the next projects, the coming projects. And in the next part, uh, I would like to highlight some of the exciting features of Ignite, uh, what we used in our development. So we used the in-memory data grid and in-memory database. Data grid is a key value that we already used. We already showed the performance uh, and it's performing very well over a million data. <coughs> uh, but I, but the in-memory database with a SQL support, where we almost uh, tested all the APIs, both the C++ and C Sharp. Everything uh, works well and um, that's one of the nice feature we can use in the fast retrieval of the data. And um, other feature what Ignite provides a thin client and thick client, which is a, it's a, it's, it's a good strategy because in our organization, we'll have uh, uh, various requirements. For example, um, you know, if it is a, if it is a, for the development or quant side, if they have the a high configured desktop, so they can use a uh, thick client. Thick client um, give more API support. For example, if you want to use a compute grid, then the, uh, uh, the thick client, we need to uh, use a thick client version of the uh, Ignite API. But uh, if, we, if we are developing some application just for the end user or a web thin client, then the thin client is uh, it's very lightweight and easy to connect. Also, it doesn't have any dependency on the JVM or, you know, JDK, the other softwares. They don't, we don't have to install that software. So this uh, thick client and thin client is a, it's a very good strategy for the overall uh, development of the applications. And the second thing, um, um, we use the persistence uh, or we like the, you know, the various configuration of Ignite. Um, since we use the C++ and um, if you look at Ignite, you know, C++ have the least support of the APIs. Um, but one thing we noticed, uh, there's always a, a, an option to work everything well. If, the, if there is no API for uh, C++, but still everything, most of the thing we can do in the configuration file and we tried in the configuration file, it, it works. Um, also, Ignite provides most of the settings, most of the settings in the configuration file. For example, if you want to um, do a persistence um, data, then we can uh, do in the configuration. Also, we can store the persistent data to shared drive, all the node. We can do node by node or, or all the node data we can put in a, um, a shared drive. Also, maybe we can use ultra disk drive so that, you know, the, even the system goes off, then it quickly recover and also it will be fast retrieval of data. So there's a lot of advantage using the flexible configuration. And okay. Yeah, that's right. Um, so the second uh, thing, sorry, the next one is, um, um, Microsoft is and uh, block free or weight free algorithm. So since um you know we are in the quant side we develop uh, lots of microservices now yeah, full most of the services in c++ and one advantage of ignite is that when we develop a microservice the microservice is for you know, for us let's say for a single responsibility and that normally price um one asset or what that will normally deal with a uh, one uh, collection of data so we can you know just slice out that data from the main store and put in the cache and that specific cache just we can um, allocate for one microservice so there is a total independent one-to-one -one kind of relation with a uh, one cache and one microservice and that works very fast as well as it doesn't have any a dependency on any of the cache items 
also with uh, um, affinity um, and um, uh, that's other um, configuration we can do in uh, Ignite <coughs> uh, for much uh, performance things. And the, the, and the, and the other point was um, since we moved um, some of the data into Ignite Cache, um, the overall load in our current data store is uh, reduced. So it was a uh, you know, good thing for all other departments, like when there's a you know, overall load reduces, um, uh, the data, uh, database works much better for other applications. Uh, because uh, most of the pricing applications and the front office applications um, were executing more on the database. So, you know, when moved some of the data into the Ignite cache, that that other side, it increased the overall performance of the database. And uh, grid computing, that, that's a nice feature Ignite gives, um, especially maybe for the um, quant developers and quant, quants they can they can um, uh, create a, a cluster group with other uh, desktop in the quant team and they can uh, do some simulations and they can execute um, some of the pricing models and verify the result before pushing to the development uh, or UAT or production so that is a nice feature I think uh, uh, any other products in the market doesn't give that. So <clears throat> that is the, uh, you know, our experience uh, mainly with Ignite. It's a very good for fast retrieval of data and overall it gives a lot of uh, flexibility in configuration and um, it gives a um, lot of API support. So that uh, that really helped us to um, to develop high performing front office applications. So that is what our experience with Ignite. Thank you very much. Thank you, Justin and Marco. Um, so um, we do have some um, questions in yeah. the chat, which. Um, we'd like to ask. Um, so the first one um, from Sagar, why protobuf instead of Ignite's default serialization? And was okay. it faster? I, I, uh, I hear for the first time that uh, there is a default serialization Ignite. Uh, I think maybe is my, is my missing. Uh, anyway, uh, Protobuf arrived before uh, Apache Ignite. So uh, when you, we work uh, with C++, so when you have a, uh, a C++ library, uh, as uh, uh, we have, uh, the first thing is just to open our library to the world, to the external world, because uh, C++ is uh, not so easy to interface with other language or uh, other system. So uh, our first choice uh, was to create an interface layer uh, using a protobuf. Okay. Uh, so uh, it's natural, uh, it's been natural for us uh, to, to keep uh, um, protobuf uh, in, in Ignite too. Okay. Uh, I don't know uh, if uh, what is uh, faster, uh, but uh, uh, protobuf uh, is uh, a binary format, uh, very easy to use and uh, very fast. Uh, I've, I think maybe some years ago we we did the, some uh, comparison with other serializer, but um, anyway, uh, protobuf is uh, quite uh, good. Okay, thank you, and then. Um... Another question from Sagan, a similar vein. And while using thin clients, did you face any serialization or deserialization issues? And okay, if so, start... how did you mitigate? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I start uh, here, then maybe I can continue, Justin. Uh, 
uh, we, we we didn't uh, any any sort of a problem any sort of issue with the serialization and deserialization because um, in, uh, in the cache we store just a buffer okay a binary buffer then uh, we get the buffer and uh, we use the uh, protobuf API in this case uh, to make the serialization and the serialization. Justin, if you want to add something about the thin client, uh, if yeah. you, have, you had uh, any issue. Yeah, I think uh, as uh, Mirko said, I don't think uh, we faced uh, any problem because uh, yeah, uh, we are storing the protobuf um, binary message as a value in the key value database. And uh, at the client side, when we retrieve the message as a binary uh, format and we uh, deserialized into the protobuf object. So there was uh, no issues in deserializing that uh, binary message. Great. Okay. Um, here's a question from Frank Chan. Um, when super fast changes happen in your SQL database, what latency will grid gain face to keep up with the latest changes via protobuf? And would there be any possible effect in reading the latest updated cache data? Okay. Uh, uh, you have to consider that uh, we store, as I said before, we store just uh, uh, a protobuf message. And then the message is not uh, the replica of uh, a, tab a database table, okay? is uh, something different. So we have uh, some uh, services that start uh, at, uh, at the morning and uh, put uh, some information, many information on a database. Then we have other uh, services that uh, take some part of this uh, data, put it together in a protocol bus message, and then we serialize and put this message on a grid gain or Apache Ignite. Uh, so if the table change, we, we, it, 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 uh, it doesn't uh, affect the, directly the, the cache, okay? Uh, we have to change our protocol buffer message. And uh, uh, if uh, it happens, uh, okay, uh, we have to clear the cache and uh, start uh, with a new format. Okay. I think uh, the second question is um, already, I have uh, already uh, answered it. Answered it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to try and cover everybody um, in the chat now. We're getting behind a little bit on time, but I don't want to miss anybody out. So just uh, quickly on to the next question um, from Vincent. Sorry, just coming in. Does the cache defined as key value or use query entity to define as a tabular format, since I remember Ignite does not support other binary data such as Avro and, and Protobuf, which you've mentioned already. Justin, do you want to answer? Uh, yeah, so uh, we used uh, both actually. We used uh, key value, which is uh, a key and value is a Protobuf binary message. Also, we uh, configured the query entity. We tried with a uh, 1 million record, it's a relational data and we tried to execute some query against that data and it was so fast. Uh, because uh, sometime uh, with the key value, uh, if you know the key, then retrieving value is so fast. But some, uh, some cases, for example, if you want to show a range of keys in the UI application, in that case, uh, this um, query entity and SQL support, it is uh, you know, more advantage, we can query set up the keys and show to the UI. And both way we tried and both way even uh, executing a query with a join or without join, it was giving a result uh, less than a second. Great. Okay. Um, moving on then to um, the next one from Chris Goodall. Um, so what is this running on in terms of internal infrastructure? So assuming it's not public cloud, what specification size of machines? Yeah, 
At the moment, we are just two servers with, uh, if I'm not wrong, with uh, 16 cores and uh, um, 64 gigabytes of memory. And uh, for the moment, uh, are uh, enough for uh, how we use Apache Ignite. I'd like to you to to add another service uh, because uh, you know the quorum. Uh, uh, we we need uh, at least three three servers, but for the moment, um, two is okay. Okay, great. Um... Moving on, question from Frank. Ignite syncs with SQL database, then update insert data. Does an update to Ignite object or database? If it updates to Ignite object, how does Ignite handle that database update? Justin? Um, I think, yeah, I, it, it's a very interesting question. And um, in our production, we are using the cache aside strategy. And uh, for that, we, I mean, okay, the uh, SQL, SQL DB, uh, is, uh, the read-through and write-through, we tested in the UAT, we tested in dev, but we st still didn't go with the production. But I think uh, we need a little more testing on this uh, this area. Um, the, the one which we tried, we didn't configure the database connection like a JDBC or ODBC. We put data in the cache, the relational data, and we tried some SQL queries. So this part uh, we didn't thoroughly test. I mean, uh, connecting to configuring the JDBC with the data ca database connection. So this part we still need to test. Okay, and then one more question um, from Jill, and this will be the last question now. Um, do you define data objects and share this module between all compute clients and, and um, thin client code? Um, and how do you coordinate data object changes between your compute code and your client code? Okay, uh, I don't know if uh, I understand uh, well than the question. Uh, anyway, consider that at the moment, uh, our uh, system is uh, just a reporting system, okay? So uh, we, sh we share all uh, only data that are present in our DB. And uh, then traders and uh, sales uh, can uh, filter the data and uh, get all the information they need. Uh, so there is no uh, synchronization between clients and uh, data. The data are in um, our DB then we have a service that get every 15 minutes, every half an hour, get all the data and put this data in Apache Ignite. And then the client get the data directly from Apache Ignite. It's very simple, okay? It's not uh, so, so, so hard to, it's very easy. Yeah, I don't know it's, uh, if I answer well to the question. I'm not sure. I think you nailed it. <laughs> um, and that's um, that's all we've got time for. So, Mirko, Justin, um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much for having Stay around me. and, and uh, join the rest of the summit as a participant. Um, and uh, we also hope to see you um, presenting at future summits. Yeah. Why Thank not? You. Thank, you. Great. Thank you. Thank bye you bye. very much. Bye-bye.